Hey guys, I'm Naya and welcome back to the channel. For today's video, I decided to do another hand trap tier list and I like to do one about once a month, I guess, because it makes sense since the format tends to switch up with the decks, text and everything and in connection with that, hand traps fall out of favor or be be it's weird or become more played um so yeah i figured we would do one once more we have the standard lineup of hand traps and we have the staple good decent and not worth it categories i would like to encourage you also to let me know down in the comments what you think of my tier list which hand traps are you playing and overall which hand traps do you think are the most busted or the worst ones in the current format also subscribe a lot of you are still not and i would love for you to be part of this community so with that being said, we can go ahead and get started. Um, we're gonna get started with Ash, and that Ash is definitely a staple. It's just incredible because it's so versatile and it can hit every single matchup almost. Uh, it's amazing against Rogue because with Rogue, you can never really expect anything. So Ash just covers that for the most part. And also it's really nice against Branded Fusion. And with the inclusion of Branded Lost, Ash is the one thing that can get around it. Similarly to how it could still hit Shadow Fusion on their Magical Meltdown a couple formats back. And yeah, Ash overall just amazing staple for sure. We have Ghost Bell. I thought about Ghost Bell for a bit before making this video. Haven't thought about the others, but I did think about Ghost Bell and um, I think I'm gonna put it in Decent probably at the bottom i just don't see almost hard like i hardly see any implication with ghost bell it's not that great against despia because of branded lost it's really not good against sword so unless you want to hit the boxia revive but that's almost pretty much it uh we have for example virtual world which i guess lao lao but how many people are actually playing virtual world there's there's that and you have the dry shot matchup which you can only hit it, it, like hit the monsters when they're in graveyard, so that's not a great um, implication either. You have the punk stuff, so I guess the deer note revive would be the point you hit it, or I guess the jet synchron revive from graveyard if you want. But there's very niche stuff and not a lot of them, so I don't see Ghost Bell being that great, honestly. Then we have Contact C, and I think I'll put it at the top of decent or maybe bottom of good. We'll see how the other hand chaps sort of get sorted. Um, but contact C, I think it's kind of underrated. Um, and I think it's really great in, a, in the Despia matchup if you use it correctly. It's probably not gonna go higher than good or it's definitely not a staple because players tend to choose cards that are applicable in a lot of matchups with tech cards and hand traps because you only have 15 slots in the side deck and you really don't want to dedicate it to something that it's not going to be that great in every single matchup, I think. So if you have a lot of stuff that can counter Despia, for example, but can also cover other matchups as well, then I would lean towards that and not choose something like Contact C. And although it's nice, you know, it's not that applicable. So maybe that's that's something to keep in mind. Um, then we have <laughs> Psycho Reader, still not worth it. Drytron was the implication. Benton is a two and Drytron is kind of nice, but I still wouldn't side for Drytron in particular. Or if I would, I would side Droll because it's great against a lot of other decks as well. So not just Drytron. So Psycho Reader for sure, not worth it right now. Then we have DD Crow, and I want to put DD Crow in staple. I think DD Crow is amazing. It has a ton of implications in this format. It has incredible Despia implications, of course, with the branded and red target and many other things. Uh, and we also have um, the punk stuff. We have the virtual world stuff. We have the sword soul stuff. So the tinnies. Um Pretty much anything, Solomon great stuff, uh, Phantom Knights, uh, Drytron, uh, DDD even, like you just, you can use it in every single matchup. And like I said before, it's good to use those kinds of hand traps. So DD Crow, in my opinion, for sure a staple. Um, then we have D Shifter. Uh, I guess let's put it in Decent, maybe like in the middle of Decent. Um, it's good and all, and I would put it in good, but it can only be used efficiently in the Flunderies strategy and I usually like to put it in good because of that but right now like thinking back I probably should have been putting it in the decent for the entire time because it can realistically be played in only one strategy so it doesn't make sense to put it in good because I like to cover 
like every single deck, if that makes sense. If a lot of decks can run these hand traps and if a lot of good decks can also be countered with these hand traps, then I think the hand traps are really good. So um, D shifter is nice and all, but like it doesn't really hurt Despia as much as it sometimes hits other decks. And since Despia is the best deck and the most dominant one, I guess this is like the deck to beat and you need to use hand traps that beat that specific deck. So D shifter is cool. But you know, it's it's really great against worse decks than Despia, and only Thunderese can run it, so probably decent it is. Um, then we have Droll. Droll is really good, I think. It's not exactly a staple, um, but you do see it, if not in the main deck, in almost every single side deck, so <laughs> pretty much it probably should be a staple, but like, hold on, <laughs> let me think that. Let me rearrange my thoughts for a second. So Droll is really nice against Despia. It's really good against Drychon, Flunder, maybe Dragon Link, if it if it's popping up here and there. It's also kind of decent against Virtual, and you have DDD stuff, so I don't know. Do we want to put Droll in? No, I won't put it in Staple because at the end of the day, you do tend to see other tech cards inside decks, and I don't really see people maining Droll, so Top of Good, I think, is the best, the best placement for Droll. Uh, then we have Gamma, so um, let me consider that. So it cannot be used in Despia, it cannot be used in, well, I guess you can use it in the Punk deck if you want, like it's not, it's a nice hand trap, but like, are you realistically gonna play it? I don't know, it's like, I'll put it at the top of Decent, just because it's really not seeing play, um, you can run it pretty much in... You know, whichever deck you want, if you can afford it, but even if you can run it, are you really going to? Like, that's the that's the issue, I think, because Despia is going to chain block for the most part anyway. Sorzo has so many things going for it that I don't know if it's that great. I would probably rather use Nibiru or Lightning Storm or a really strong going second card. Decks don't even have that much space to run a lot of hand traps, so at that point... I would opt for going second cards. So that's why I think like Gamma is cool and all, but you don't really see it. And yeah, pretty much every single argument I said before. So decent, I think it is. And then we have Dogwood. Um, you know, it's Dogwood. I guess I'll put it at the top, at the top of not worth it for, for now. Um, it has some implications, not a lot of them though, and people don't really run it. So there's that. Um, no material. Yeah, it's like... Uh, it's not worth it. Pretty much everything I've said about Contact C could be said about No Material as well. Um, just because it's not the go-to hand trap and at that point you'd be using a lot of different stuff um, rather than using No Material. So yeah, it's not bad but it's really not being played and I can see, I can see why. So that we have Impermanence, I think it's better than DD Crow though because it has... Um, very nice implication going second if you draw it as the sixth card. So if you draw Didi Crow as the sixth card, it's kind of like, okay, you know, if, if you're up against Despia and you can hit that Brandon Red target, then it's all good. But like, if it's pretty much anything else, um, it's not that great. So that's why uh, Impermanence, I think, is better. You can use it to trade one for one with an interruption. It's also nice going second just to, to just actually using, use it during your opponent's turn. Um, it's good against almost every single deck that's being played right now. So yeah, I cannot say enough great things about Impermanence. I think it's an awesome card. The effect to turn off the, uh, the actual column it comes up a lot if people don't respect impermanence. It comes up a lot if you need to turn off uh, floodgates. And uh, yeah, I think it's just amazing. And then we have Lancia. So um, let me think about that. So Lancia is probably top of decent. <laughs> we legit don't have any cards in the good category. That's so weird. So Lancia is at the top of decent because it's really not great right now, which... For the most part, from almost every single year I have played this game, I have used Lancia in my side deck in every single format because it was really good. But right now, it's just not. Um, I guess if you want to use it defensively to stop evenly matched, 
But at that point, you will probably decide something else. Um, Virtual world is not that dominant that you would have to side Lancia. Um, what else? Like almost every single other deck is just not hurt by Lancia at all. So yeah, decent. This decent is probably good. Uh, then we have Skullmeister, which hmm, this one is also decent. I think um, pretty much, you know, when you have effects that activate in the graveyard and there's only one effect, like in the um, prank kits format, it was really good to hit the prank kit when you couldn't chain block with the faithful. So before the brave prank kits shenanigans, you were able to use Skullmeister on the prank kits effect and you were pretty much, you know, good because the prank kits player usually just passed their turn. But right now, with the amount of chain blocking that's happening. So if a Despia player actually like starts doing their stuff, they will make sure to put the thing that's least likely to actually hurt them if it gets disrupted as the last chain link. So everything else that they actually care about is going to be chain link one or two. Um, then you have stuff like tragedy which activates in the banish pile for example if if it gets banished you know activates there so you don't really care um you have mercurier also when it's banished gets the effect like you have effects in the graveyard also but at that point they are going to be chain blocked and there's other decks as well of course you have the tania stuff which that will i guess be a good implication so that's why it's in decent maybe we could put it at the top of decent because of that um but yeah like i mentioned before and a lot of times um you're gonna play better hand jobs than that so yeah we have ghost mourner which uh i think i might actually put mourner in good Probably at the bottom of good, but that's only because I think all of these effects, when it comes to Impermanence, Mourner, and Veiler, they're really nice. Like, these are just solid one-for-one -one trade offs, which I'm, I'm a big fan of. And you can also use it uh, against Scythe, which Scythe is, get is getting a lot of popularity, especially with the Punk deck. Like, with the... <laughs> You know, we just got Jet Synchron back and people are already using the TG, TG Wonder Magician, you know, all of that, like sight locking. <laughs> you know, it's it's happening still. You can use it in Virtual World, you can do it in, in the Punk deck. And Mourner is amazing because if they use it on your turn, since it is a mandatory trigger, you will be able to use Mourner and negate it. And uh, yeah, it's also like just decent, like I mentioned with Valor and Impermanence comparison. So that's why I think it's in, it should be in the good category. Then we have Nibiru. Uh, I put Nibiru in good, but let me decide if I wanted to put above Droll or below Droll. So I guess below Droll would be better. Um, Nibiru is really nice. I'm a big fan of it because when a format rolls around when Nibiru is not that great, decks that get hurt by Nibiru are going to get better because they don't need to play around it, their turns can just be explosive. You have Salomon Great, you have Virtual World, you have uh, Heroes, you have a lot of these decks that can easily OTKO or establish massive boards and because people don't play Nibiru, their boards are that much bigger and better and you can just easily get OTK'd with something like, you know, just a an access code play in Salomon Great. And um, that's why I'm a fan of Nibiru. If you're thinking ahead enough, you're still going to side it because you catch people off guard when they're not planning for you to play Nibiru. This was maybe weirdly put, but uh, yeah, that's why I think it's really, really good. And I like to cite at least two copies of it. Probably not main it though, because at the end of the day, you will be facing the decks that are most represented, which is going to be Despia, which is going to be, I guess, Nibiru is nice against Sword Soul if people play into it, which more than likely they will do because people are not using Nibiru. If they go for Baron though, then I guess you just exchange, so it's not that bad. Um, but yeah, it can be used effectively against a lot of strategies and especially you can catch people off guard, so there's that. Uh, then we have Ogre. And Ogre is, um, huh, let's, let's, let's consider that. So I think I should put Ogre in Decent. Yeah, we're gonna put Ogre in decent. I do think Lancia is a bit too high though, so I might need to switch things up in the decent slot because I just throw everything in it. So let's consider all of that. So this one is really nice. 
against most of the meta, if we're being completely honest. We said Skullmeister is not that great because of the chain blocking. Lancia is not really used. Contact T is actually not bad. Gamma is also not bad. Bell is not that great. Um, I guess we could arrange it like that. Uh, now we have Ogre. So Ogre was great against Brave decks, but Brave is really falling out of favor. So there's pretty much no implication for uh, Ogre whatsoever. And I think we can just move it to the bottom of Decent because if you still think about the meta you, you're going to, the kind of event you're going to, if you know people are playing uh, Brave, or especially if you're going to locals where usually you tend to know what people are playing, then of course you can use it because if you use it in a deck in a combination with Emergency Teleport, it's also amazing and can be utilized more efficiently and consistently going second to break through a board to make sure the Wandering Griffin Rider doesn't go through. Uh, so you can use it, you can side it. But yeah, you know, I guess we can put it over here next to Bell. Now I think I'm satisfied. I think I'll leave the decent category alone. Uh, then we have Phantasme. People are not using Link monsters, that's for sure. So like, yeah, it's just not great. I don't even know where to put it. Like, I guess here, it's it's really not that great. Uh, Winter Cherry is also really not, not seeing any kind of play, not doing anything. It's not a format in which if you take one monster out of the opponent's extra deck, it's really going to do anything because the extra decks right now have so much utility that there's not one single thing that you can take out to hinder a strategy. So, you know, cherries, I don't really see doing anything. I guess we can put it down here. Uh, retaliating C. Um, yeah, not that great. Really, really not doing anything right now. Doesn't hurt Espia and other people are just not using any kind of cards to actually trigger the Retaliating C. So yeah, it's really not that great. Then we have Token Collector. Now this one is going in staple for sure. I'll put it at... Hmm, I might put it at the bottom just because... Uh, it's played in the side deck. So if we're going by which cards people are actually maining, I guess we can put the top three in the main deck usually. And Token Collector also is kind of weird in Sword Soul, of course. So there's that also, if not every, every single deck can run it. Um, it needs to be, that needs to be pointed out, but it's still a staple, I think, because you know, it's really busted right now. Every single deck uses tokens and you can just, Except Aspia, of course. Except Aspia. But if you get into a matchup, especially a Sword Soul matchup or a Brave matchup, you can definitely win it easily by using Token Collector. It can be sent with Beatrice or, you know, other cards and people like to use those cards right now. And they usually like to side, you know, Token Collector or a Necro World Banshee and Zombie World just to be ready for every single matchup. Um, but I guess those cards, of course, would go in the tech cards or not even in there, I just wanted to mention it. So in tandem with that, you can use Token Collector and send it. You can play three copies to make sure you see it against something like Sword Soul. So yeah, I think it's an amazing card, a very, very, very strong card. If it's triggered from the graveyard, like every single turn, you legit cannot get rid of it. So yeah, I think it's busted. I think it's staple for sure. Uh, and then we have Valor, which um, I'll put it in probably in good. Uh, because you do not see it in every single deck. Although I think it's very good and very underrated. Actually, we might move it up above Nibiru. Um, just because it's more than likely going to be played in the main deck. As opposed to Nibiru, which might not even make it in someone's side deck. So there's that. But Valor, pretty much everything I've said about impermanence can be said about Valor as well. Except for maybe it's not that great as a sixth card it's really dead as a sixth card so there's that but it can be played in something like a sky striker deck which utilizes the um access code selim package to otk which is a great implication as well and uh yeah i mean other decks as well of course but this is the one that usually likes to use that i think it's it's a very very decent or better than decent trade-off um, and right now, if you're going for a heavy hand trap build, this is what you want because you have a lot of disruptions that you need to go through. Um, so yeah, that's that's pretty much it when it comes to Valor. And that's actually going to be it for the hand traps. I think I chose 
like the right ones to talk about i don't think i missed anything if i did do let me know but yeah that's pretty much it like we have the four staples and the four good cards everything else that's in the decent category can be used you don't have the side deck as big enough to effectively use every single one of those cards because you need to take the tech cards into account as well so yeah hopefully this video was entertaining and interesting if you enjoyed it of course like it give me a sub check out all of the social media and i'll see you in the next one peace